Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. Pastor Craig coming to you from Winsboro, South Carolina with Wake Up in the Word. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we have started this section of talking about spiritual gifts and giftedness and how the body of Christ works together. We finished up with verse number 11 yesterday after Paul talks about a specific little list of gifts. This is not comprehensive nor complete. Spiros Odiates says that the reason these gifts are listed here is because these are the ones that apparently were causing problems in the church understanding them. And so that's you know based on the letter that they had written to Paul. So that's why he's addressing these specifically. But he goes on to give us some great principles about the operation of gifts, giftedness, and the parts of the body. In verse number 12, we read these words. For just as the body is one and has many parts, and all of the parts of that body, though many are one body, so also is Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, capital S there, referencing, referencing the Holy Spirit. We're all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. And we were all given one Spirit to drink. There's that capital S again referring to the Holy Spirit. Indeed, he says in verse 14, the body is not one part, but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it is not for that reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it is not for that reason any less uh, a part of the body, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But, but as it is, God has arranged each one of the parts in the body just as he wanted. And if they were all the same part, where would the body be? <laughs> as it is, there are many parts but one body. Now, the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you, or again, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that are weaker are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we clothe these with greater honor, and our unrespectable parts are treated with greater respect, which our respectable parts do not need. <laughs> Instead, God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the less honorable so that there would be no division in the body, but that the members would have the same concern for each other. So if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. And before we get to that conclusion that we'll open up tomorrow, I wanted to put all of that together today because Paul uses an absurdity to try to make a point. The whole idea that as your human body has so many different parts and each cell is made for a purpose and they all work together, even though they have different functions. A heart beats to pump blood. A stomach digests food. Your feet help you to travel. They're the things that take all the rough treatment of whatever ground you're trying to cover. Your eyes let you see where you're going. You know, every single part of the body has a function, different functions, but all have a purpose, making the body work together. Now, this absurdity that he uses to allow us to see the point really drives home this issue of unity within the church. It makes us understand that we can't be criticizing other parts of the body. Every part is important. Friends, whether you change a diaper in the nursery, whether you lock up the doors, whether you sweep the floors, whether you sing in the choir or teach a Sunday school class or lead a small group during the week, whatever you do, it is important. And we should be recognizing that when we take the body into consideration that every single thing that we do as we pray and sing and support and love one another through life's difficulties, we've got to be able to respect the people that make up the body of Christ. And that kind of mutual respect makes church work. You know, as we look at the way 
the body of Christ is put together across the world, we come up with so many different styles and types of people and styles and types of worship and the way that God works through all of that and in different societies and different places. Wow, it's just astounding. But what was happening at Corinth is that some were elevating other gifts over the others, some were mocking and putting down some in other groups because of their gifts or they didn't have the preferred gift and are trying to say, if you don't have this gift, there's something wrong with you. And so this kind of attitude was tearing the church apart. The same thing that happens today when we don't take into consideration this beautiful principle. What is God trying to tell us? Well, I think it's pretty plain, but for many of us, it's just grasping a spiritual pr uh, truth that's necessary for us to get a hold of this morning. Uh, when Tony Evans looks at verses 23 and 24 in particular, he says, though private parts are not displayed for the whole world to see, they perform indispensable functions. So it is in the body of Christ. You know, a little toe may seem fairly insignificant, but if you stub yours, it will shut you down. The pain affects the whole body. Indeed, if one member of the body suffers, all the members suffer with it. Therefore, don't be concerned only for your own needs within Christ's body. As Paul says elsewhere, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, this is simply an application of the second great commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Paul mentions several other things uh, in this passage that we're going to get to, but he's just trying to get the Corinthian church to realize the importance of recognizing the body of Christ as a whole made up of so many different parts and different individuals, all that are valuable in the kingdom of God. Now think about it. That person you think is so insignificant that sits in the back of the church, sits in your small group and doesn't say much of anything, sometimes just thumbs through their Bible, looks like they're not uh, you know, as engaged as you might be, is just as significant as you are if you're the person that's the mouthpiece standing in front of everybody. How much of the blood of Christ did it take to save that person versus you? The exact same amount. <laughs> Friends, it is the blood of Christ that binds us together. And because he died for us all, as Paul talked about in chapter 11 when we looked at the Lord's Supper, because Christ died for everyone, every part of the body, we shouldn't be elevating some people to say, hey, wow, look, they're the ones that's most visible. Look at that face. Look at the, <laughs> the parts of that visible part of the body that's most important. I've got news for you, friends. If that heart wasn't beating, those lungs weren't pulling in air and putting oxygen into your body, those most visible parts that seem to be the most important would die. And that's why you and I need to recognize the body of Christ may be one, but it's made up of many different parts. All of them deserve the love of Christ. All of them deserve the support of each and every one of us. And making others strong makes us strong in the end because the whole body is blessed and grows because of it. Well, that's enough babbling for this morning, but we're going to get more into this deep, deep subject tomorrow in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And as we wake up in God's word, why don't you join us like this, share it, and let's keep on understanding just a little bit of the time, understanding God's word each and every day. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again right here tomorrow as we wake up in God's Word.